Josh, first of all, a very warm welcome to the New Saints. You were born in Northern Ireland and for much of your boyhood, you played junior football. Yeah, so um, grew up in Derry, played for um, Top of Hull Celtic. Um, quite a local team, but like what drew me to that club was it was very family oriented and I got on really well with the coaches there and to be fair, I joined quite late, so I was probably playing with them from 13. Um, I started there at 13 and then yeah, kicked on from there and, and got a wee bit, wee bit of notice then when I was around 16. And you certainly did kick on because Derry City came knocking and you signed a professional contract for them. Yeah, so literally I played, I think it was like a foil cup, which is like a local tournament and, and Derry that hosted it and um, done well that year. It was 16s and then literally, you know, I was sort of fast tracked a wee bit under the, the, Derry, the Derry City squad. and. Like there was a bit of interest at the time from like Nottingham Forest, which was like, oh, you know, you might be going to try with Nottingham Forest. I was only, only a kid really, like, so it was like, I don't know what they'd be, they be doing. And then I sat down with my family and I thought the right thing for me was, you know, to sign with Derry because I was offered a contract around the same time. And um, no, it done me well. It was, it was men's football and it was um, playing for a, a club that I love and I still support them now, today, so. And you were playing your football in the south of Ireland. You, you moved back to the north because you signed for Glenavon. Yeah, so I stayed at Derry from so I was at Derry from seventeen until twenty one, I think it was, and it was just I think um, I didn't play enough games that I wanted to. Um, it was a lack of game time really, and that was why I had to move. And you know, people at the time were like, "Oh, you should stay. You should stay." I still had a year and a half left, and. It was just a decision where I was like, nah, if, if I can go somewhere and play every week and enjoy my football again and, and show people what I can do, then, you know, I could I could have a, a good career, hopefully, and, and, you know, try and get a move to England or Scotland, and luckily it paid off a bit. And while you were with the two Irish clubs, you also played European football. Yeah, so in Derry, I think we qualified two or three years out of the, the seasons I was there, and it was a good experience. Obviously, I went, I went to Belarus when I was quite young with Derry and, and experienced that. I didn't play that year and then we went to, um, we actually went to Wales as well. I think I played against Aberystwyth for, for a bit when I was younger and then, um, yeah, so like w we've been to a few nice countries and, you know, football opens that many doors for you. You get to travel and, and see some nice places that you would never go to. So, yeah, and then the likes of Glen Avon then too, we, we one of their, you know, biggest performances is against Molda and, we beat them at home at Warnview Park, so it was uh, it was a good experience, yeah. And not only have you played on the European stage, but you've also scored the winner in a game as well. Yeah, so the European game against Moda, we were like massive underdogs, obviously. We were only a part-time club and we went out, we, we just, no fear, and we won 2-1 and yeah, luckily I grabbed the winner, but I think just for me, it was probably the biggest game to date in my career, not just for like playing in Europe and scoring a winner. It was my daughter's first game ever watching me. So for that, like it's it's something I'll never forget. And you mentioned Nottingham Forest and the interest there. You've also had trials in England as well with the likes of Everton and Manchester United. Yeah, so I was playing play with Northern Ireland seventeens, and um, done quite well in in, in the seventeens, and then came back and. Had a bit of interest, I think, and like I never really knew much of it at the time. I was just a 17 year old that was enjoying his football and, and playing full time with Derry City. I was just trying to progress, and you know, I think it was the February, um, just before my 18th birthday, where I was told you're going to Manchester United for a week, and I was like, you know, I was obviously delighted. And my most of my family are Manchester United supporters, and then I went to um, Everton the week after, but. There was a, it was a bit strange, obviously, going on there, a new environment and leaving home and, and experiencing that, that side of football, you know, that full time, big, big stadiums, big, um, big training grounds. Like, I was never used to that. And I always thought I was quite quiet at that age as well, where I was quite on my shell. So it's just one of them things. It was a great experience. I actually, I don't remember much about it, like, because it was that long going on. But, you know, it was one of them things where I remember going on the training and seeing the players there. And you're, you're just thinking these these boys are the boys you see on TV, like so. It was just it was a massive time, yeah, in my career. 
And although both Derry City and Glenavon are in the geographically in Northern Ireland, yeah. the former play their football in the south. Did you notice a difference between the styles from both different types of approaches in those respective leagues? Yeah, so back then there was a lot more full-time teams in the League of Ireland, um, which is the Sovereign League. And I always thought like when I was at Derry City, we were we our style we were more like playing with wingers and you know and like a 10 that was sort of modern football back then i suppose and it was quite technical and, and you know probably not as direct as the, the irish league and i thought for me to progress and all reason why i had to go to the likes of, of a glen avon was to add the the other side to my game because i was always like you know the technical winger or the the tidy player but i, I never really got tested physically and, and you know like long balls and, and winning second balls and, and being direct and getting better goals and whatever so for me it was like I want to go and try and add that to my game and you know we played completely different systems we played 4-4-2 at Glen Alvin it was quite um, you know we were we were solid and I was like a left midfielder more than a left winger so I'd done both jobs like I was always helping out the fullback and getting forward when I could just high energy and for me like Glen Avon were very good to me. Um, they knew what my goal was. They knew that I wanted to go to England or Scotland, um, that I had ambitions. And, and to be fair, it was a move that, that worked out for me. And I think I probably still, I wasn't happy with my numbers there. Like, I've never really had a season where I've got massive numbers. Like, and I know a lot of, a lot of fans and a lot of football people now, is, it's based off stats. Like, um, for me, like, I play my best football there so far um, just because I enjoyed myself. And I think from my performances alone, that's probably why I, I got a move and in, in, under the English Football League. Well, we'll come to that in due course. But you mentioned that you represented Northern Ireland. Were you surprised when the call-up came or because of the form that you were on at that time, you were perhaps half expecting it? I was surprised because um, the year before, obviously 16s, that's when I started to sort of do well, um, really kick on. and. Um, there was like the centenary shield, I think it's sixteens. I, I, or the victory shield, I think it is. Sorry, um, I didn't get into that squad. I didn't. I was never like training with them. I didn't know anything of it. And I think we actually played. So I played for a dairy reserve team that played a under twenty one or under twenty Northern Ireland team, and there was a Northern Ireland manager there or a, a coach of some sort of the youth youth team and he rang the Northern Ireland manager at the 17s at the time Stephen Robinson and and they just they were like no nah, this 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 wee boy can play like so we'll we'll bring him on and then yeah straight on and, and played a couple of friendlies and then I went to the Euros and at 17 the Euro qualifiers played the likes of Holland and you know it was it was a good experience it was definitely something new to me because I don't even think I've made my senior debut at this stage so I was training full time, but I haven't really played men's football as such in games. So no, it was it was a surprise, definitely. Um, I think I think I done well when I went on, but I was also quite like it was a bigger environment for me. Like you had players that come from different you know English clubs, and I was probably one of the only ones that was still in Ireland. So I knew that I had to prove something like. And sticking with the international stage, although you didn't represent them, you were invited to a training camp with the Republic. Yeah, so it was literally, I played up until 19s with Northern Ireland. And again, I, I thought I'd done quite well in the, in the qualifiers again. And, you know, I was, um, it was at that stage in my career from 19 to 21, where I probably didn't play as much football as I, th I thought I should have, or I, like I, that I wanted to really. Um, when you're young and that age, you just want to play. That's that's just that. Like if, if it's your your job and your hobby, you need to be doing what you're what you're good at and what your hobby is. So for me, I was just I just really wanted to get in and, and see if I could test myself against the best players. And it was out of the blue. It was it was a random phone call. I, I think I played a, a Derry match, and because obviously Derry play in the south of Ireland, a lot of the games are in Dublin. Um, so I just got a, a call from a, a Republic of Ireland, like. 21 manager at the time and 
he said to me, look, we have a training camp. Um, I think you'll, you'll come and get into the squad. So um, we'd like you to come to the camp and, and basically see um, what, you, what you can do really and, and see if you can get into the squad. But he was quite happy and quite keen to bring me. So we started the process then. I went down and enjoyed it. Like at this stage of my career, I, like I say, I didn't play as many games as I, as I wanted. And I thought it was like a wee a lifeline, really. And it was like, well, if I want to go to England or, you know, make a career at it and get a move, then, you know, if I was to play for Republic 21s, then I would be happy to do it. Because at the time, like Northern Ireland, I never heard anything from, from the 21s. So it was my last year at the 21s as well. So I just thought I'll take a gamble here and, and see if it pays off and, and see if I can get a, a move from it. And do you still have hopes and ambitions that one day you will play at the full international level i think every player does like obviously it's, it's the pinnacle isn't it like um for me like when i went to shrewsbury it was the same sort of questions asked and for me now it's i have to enjoy my club football like if i think if i'm enjoying my club football and I, that's when i'm playing my best like if i'm happy and i'm enjoying myself then that's when the best best side of me comes out in football like so i think if i get to express myself then you know, for me, that's that's the main thing. And you know, obviously, I have a young family. Um, football, like you don't see everything in football. Like I have to keep them happy. And you know, when I'm when I'm not happy, it rubs off on them. So um, you know, it's for me, it's just club football first. If look, if if I kick on again, then so be it. And you know, if I'm good enough to get a call up, then so be it as well. But it's not something I'm gonna you know hang on to forever. Like I have to enjoy myself now that I can. And then back to the club football, you did cross the Irish Sea into England, Shropshire to be precise, yeah. Shrewsbury Town. Yeah. How did the connection there, how did the switch come about from Northern Ireland to the English Football League? So I was, I was sort of made, I made it known myself at the time that I thought the next stage of my career, I, I should be going full time. It's just, the, you know, I got, I left a full time environment to go to a part time environment and lost the training, you know, the training time really just contact time with the ball like I was on every day but I wasn't playing much games with Derry and then it was the opposite I was on twice a week and I was playing 40 games a season with Glenavon so I loved that side of it but I also knew to get better and progress that I would need to be on full time so for me it was just you know I, I met a, f a few clubs in, in Northern Ireland at the time and um, the full time clubs and was speaking to them and you know I wasn't sort of making up my mind on anybody and I was just sort of seeing what would suit me and at that time then my agent got a phone call and it was from Glenavon and they said tell Josh not to sign for anybody um Shrewsbury Towns just made a bid and we've accepted it so it was just it was free like mutual mutual people that knew each other from Shrewsbury and from the Irish League that sort of done a wee bit of homework on me and I think Shrewsbury were looking for a left winger at the time and and you know they came in and I think I moved on the so that might have been a Friday and I think I moved on the, the Sunday or Monday and that was that. That was it was me. It's gone. And how did you find the English Football League compared generally to what you were used to in Ireland? Yeah, so obviously I was it was more more the fact of the part time uh, because I was going from part time and COVID had as well. I signed in the, the end of July, start of August. But I hadn't trained since March, I think it was, or February when COVID hit we were only part-time so we weren't doing any training then so for me it was more i was shocked i was like i need to get my fitness up i need to um come in and really push myself to get fit and i thought technically i would be okay like i was always like a technical player and and like they try and get on the ball and stuff so i wasn't i was i knew it was going to be different and because i had that dairy background as well and that was full time i knew what they expect also so um for me really it was about the fitness side um in terms of football it's it's quite a mixture of everything. Um, you know, you have, I've, Derry was quite technical, Glen Avon was quite physical and direct, and you know, there's also some very good players in both leagues. Um, and I think for, it's nearly like the best of both worlds in the English Football League. Like some clubs are obviously massive budgets, they can bring in whoever they want, and they have some top players, and there's obviously a lot of internationals. So, the step up was good, I really enjoyed it. I really enjoyed testing myself and, you know, obviously the manager that was there, like he brought me there and, you know, I was brought as a winger. So it was it was nice to, to get over, but it changed quite quickly then. And, you know, we didn't really play with wingers then after, after three or four months.
and some of the highlights of your time with the Shrews? I think probably coming on at, at Anfield has to be up there. Like I only played a couple of minutes, like, but just just that that experience itself. Like you have players like Van Dyke and that there, so it was just just coming on the Anfield was amazing. I had me I had a couple of my family there, and and I think probably my first game, uh, my first start. Sorry, started away at Peterborough and scored. So it was like my full debut and I scored. So I was, was delighted with that. But um, yeah, it would be one of them too. Like. And when did you find out that the new Saints were interested in signing you? So it was actually when I, when I was out of contract, um, you know, when it was made public that I wasn't going to be signing again with Shrewsbury. Um, I think someone contacted me, myself, and then the contact of the club, and the club contacted me then again, and you know, recommended and knew the people here and spoke really well of them. Um, spoke really well of the club, and you know, for me. I sort of I had an eye on TNS and I mean because it was quite local to me and they played Glen Torn last year in Europe and I had friends that were playing for Glen Torn. I always um I watched the games last year and stuff so um you know I was always sort of interested and it's just like like me myself and my family like we're really settled where we are. Um I think one of the main things about moving over to Shrewsbury that, that sort of kept us like and around the area and happy was where we were living and um you know when I heard you know they were interested it was it was definitely definitely interested me and obviously um I had a friend that played here many years ago you might remember him yourself um Jared Doherty he was a goalkeeper so he was at Derry with me and you know I, I knew he was here after has has like moved from English football so I always had a, a sort of an idea of the club um, but yeah it was it was an exciting time and when the manager contacted me then I was I was glad they talked to him. And you've already mentioned Aberystwyth Town you've yeah. played against them in the past but what did you know about Welsh football in general prior to signing the contract that you've just done with TNS? So I just like I know obviously that it's probably a better standard than people would would give a credit for. Um, for me like I, I'm I'm not somebody that's going to sit and lie and say oh, I want to be in England because of status because it's not the type of person I am. Um, first and foremost, it's it's about me being happy, and I think the type of football that TNS play that, that'll suit me and hopefully you know it's 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 a good match and for me like the Welsh League if it if it's a platform for people they they show what they can do then that you know that's all you can ask for. It's quite similar I would say it's quite similar to some of the Irish teams. Um, in the league, you know, you have the likes of, you know, TNS and, you know, the bigger teams that, like the Linfield, you know, who are going to play in Europe, like, who are like the heavy hitters in the league. You know, that's probably the main thing about it is that you have them teams that are, that are very good and they can compete. And then, you know, it's just about branching the, the gap then. I think that's the only thing that in Ireland that I've probably learnt as well, that you know the best teams are, are the best and then the gap from the, the lower teams then are not as close as in England because in England like it's more anybody could beat anybody so I think in terms of what I knew about it like I, I just knew mostly about the, the European games I've always kept an eye and and Welsh football and stuff because I have a couple of mitts that play around um, you know the likes of Bala and Newtown and uh, you know I have a few friends that play there so I was always like keeping an eye on them so I'm not too too knowledgeable on the league itself but no, definitely keep the kept the keen eye on it. And when you pull on the green and white shirt of the new Saints, you get onto the pitch. What can the fans expect to see from you? I think f first and foremost, like for me, the last couple of years, I've always made sure I was given everything. Doesn't matter what position I played in the last the last club I was at. Like I, I was always made sure that you know I'm going to give everything, and I think that's important as a player now. Um, I've learned that over the years and and my experience like I think just as a winger what I'm good at and what got me the move I think that's what I have to get back to um, and that's just you know exciting the fans and trying to be players and, and create um, I think I, I lost that a bit in the last two years where you know I was playing more as a wing back and it was quite um, you know both sides of the game where it was mostly defending and it was new to me so I don't mind that because I've added it to the to the the game. But for me, I think what I'm best at is is creating and 
and just trying to get people off their seats and, and enjoy the game and you know if I can pitch on me a few goals and, and assist then that would be nice as well. Josh we've talked about football so far but what do you like to do away from the game to relax and perhaps take your mind off the pressures of football itself? So probably a lot of footballers do it but like a bit of golf I think um, enjoy a bit of golf. I actually haven't played as much as I, I thought I was going to over the summer. Um, played a bit when I went home with my, with my friends so uh, a bit of golf and then I do a lot of things with my family like because it's just me um, my missus and my daughter in Shrewsbury we do you know there's a lot of family days going on so um, you know uh, I'm a, I would say I'm a family man. And finally as you know football clubs have an initiation ceremony and at the New Saints a time will come perhaps in a situation like we're in right now, we've eaten and everyone's together and you'll be standing up in front of your fellow professional footballers and you will be expected to sing a song. Yeah. What, and I'm putting you on the spot now, are we likely to hear from you? I don't know, I've, I've, I've actually thought about it today before I even came here because I thought I might have been doing it today. So. Um I don't know, There's, I get a bit nervous like, um, it is a nerve wracking time but I've been changing my mind from like um, Stand By Me to Ed Sheeran to Adele so I don't know, I don't know what they sing. Um, whatever comes out hopefully and, <laughs> and hopefully it stops quite quite quickly as well so um, yeah one, one of them, it'll have to be. Well it sounds like a case of wait and see <laughs> yeah. on that one. Josh, I really enjoyed our little conversation this evening finding out about your life, your career, what makes you tick as a person. And again, as I said at the very beginning, a warm welcome to the New Saints. Thank you very much.